Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan and I have a channel dedicated to wellness, mindset, and just kind of my own personal journey. And yeah, so I wanted to dive in today about something that is let me make sure the mic's on. <laughs> I wanted to dive into something that I know personally I've experienced, but also I see it all the time. I am in a lot of different like Facebook communities for different topics. Um, two different topics have to do with like medical things or a diagnosis of some sort. And so I wanted to touch base on the depression and anxiety and grief that comes with receiving some sort of diagnosis. And your diagnosis could honestly, like this applies really to any type of diagnosis. Um, obviously there's some diagnoses that are more frightening than others. And that's kind of like a relative opinion. But um, for me personally, like I was diagnosed with something um, called retinitis pigmentosa. And I was diagnosed when I was 15 and I didn't, it didn't really hit me until I turned 30 that this diagnosis actually is completely life changing and life altering and going from somebody who just thought I had troubled vision and then finding out that I potentially could lose my vision and that my vision was going to affect like my day to day life for the rest of my life, um, was a pretty big like shock to find that out. But I don't want to minimalize that regardless if you're dealing with the diagnosis that, hey, you could go blind, or if you're dealing with a diagnosis that you have, um, like something else, some anything else, really. I don't want to minimize that there's all different types of diagnoses, um, and they all, like, we all accept those things or resist those diagnoses in lots of different ways. So I want to talk about like my own personal journey and realizations with a diagnosis that I had received and also how I've worked through that diagnosis. And um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about that today. So I see in these Facebook groups that I mentioned that have to do with medical diagnoses that a lot of people are suffering with like anxiety, depression, or grief. Grief is like a really, really, really big one when it comes to diagnoses that are like medical. And it's something that I don't really see people talked a lot about when it comes to solutions. Most people that have some sort of a diagnosis, it seems like the majority of people just kind of um, go into a dark depression. They have a lot of anxiety around their diagnosis and they have a lot of grief. And I think that a lot of this has to do with the way that oftentimes we are given a diagnosis. A lot of times there's not support and emotional, like there's not things emotionally talked about whenever we are given diagnoses by people in the medical industry. A lot of times they'll just look at your file and say, oh, you have this thing and this is what it is and best of luck to you. And for a moment, a diagnosis can feel uh, relieving because you're like, wow, I finally understand what it is that I'm have been struggling with. It makes you feel like you're not crazy. Like it, it can be relieving for a bit. But then when you, a lot of times when you kind of sit back and start to think about whatever this diagnosis is that you received, um, it can be super alarming and it can either send you down a rabbit hole into research or a, um, or a rabbit hole into like, trying to find support communities, like it can send you down a rabbit hole, which can create a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression, especially, especially if the diagnosis that you're experiencing is something that's life altering. I know for me personally, when I was given a diagnosis, um, that I basically was just kind of like, yep, this is what it is. And I had a sense of relief, but then I literally like, just went down a rabbit hole for like a month going on YouTube, finding Facebook support groups, like doing all of these things, trying to research this like label that I had just been given by a doctor, not very gently. And looking back, I realized that had I had been um, a little bit more emotionally equipped to be able to deal with that sort of thing, or if maybe the person that was giving me that information, the, the doctor, the medical staff, like maybe if they had been a little bit more like 
trained maybe to deal with the emotional aspect of handing somebody a diagnosis, maybe I wouldn't have gone down a rabbit hole and um, fallen into really dark depressions and like a whole stage of grief. And Um, I don't like to put blame, like this isn't really anybody's fault. It's not the medical staff's fault. It's not my fault for not being emotionally prepared because no one can really, um, prepare you to receive like some information about your physical body or even maybe your mental body that, um, it's just kind of shocking and it's, and can be scary. And so I wanted to make this video today because these are, I want to share like my own process with my grief around a diagnosis and also tools that I've found that have been helpful for me. Um, because I just see in these Facebook communities and just people that I know that have experienced some sort of diagnosis that it's like, it can be completely like life altering, let it like, Forget about the actual thing, the disease, the condition that you've been diagnosed with, but just the way that people actually um, handle that news can be life altering. So with me, what I did, um, circling back around, like I went down a rabbit hole, I fell into a lot of grief. Um, Then I realized like, oh my gosh, I actually need to get off of these Facebook groups. I need to stop researching because all of this is doing is like, consuming me. That's all I think about. Like every single time I get on my phone, every time I have a spare moment in the day, like that's all that I think about. That's all that I am. And I think this is like super common and, um, it makes sense why people do this. I know I'm not the only one. I've talked to other friends that have totally different types of diagnoses and they just go down rabbit holes, um, and create like even more anxiety for themselves. But that's, that's normal, I think. And so for me, what I had to do is I literally got off all of the Facebook groups. I stopped doing any type of research on what it was. And I just started to allow myself to sur- surrender to what was going on and surrender to my emotions. I understood to some degree that I was in a deep depression, that I was having a lot of anxiety. I didn't really understand that I was grieving also. I was grieving what life I thought that I was going to have. I was grieving, um, who I thought that I was as a person. And like, I was grieving, like I was genuinely grieving, like from the idea that I might lose my vision. And honestly, like, it's okay that I was grieving. I think that that's normal, but it hadn't happened yet. Um, I really like my whole life just kind of got turned upside down from a doctor's appointment. And looking back, um, had I had had the tools that I have now to like move through that information that I was given, I don't think that I would have like had such a deep grief, anxiety, and depression that I experience and that I see so many other people experience. So many people I see on these support groups are really struggling mentally. And I understand why, because I've been there. But Now that I'm on the other side of it, now that I understand that I am not my diagnosis, I understand that doctors practice medicine. It's a practice. Um, I understand that the way that I speak to myself, to my physical body, to my emotional body, that manifests. And so I got, after I kind of went through like my own dark place, I started to realize like, I'm not going to wake up every day and um, just consume myself with a diagnosis that a doctor gave me. I'm going to wake up every day and be present. I'm going to wake up every day and believe that I am Jordan. I am not a diagnosis. I am not wrapped up into a summary of something that um, may or may not be happening with my body. And this is not because I'm in denial. It's just because I understand that the power of our words and the power of our mind is so very strong. And I wasn't going to sit there and just consume myself with a stamp on my forehead that I have this diagnosis. I got out of the Facebook groups that I was in because I really didn't need to create more depression and anxiety around something that hadn't really happened yet. I had gotten diagnosed with something that uh, potentially could make you lose your vision. And at this point in time, I still had vision. So I wasn't going to consume myself with thinking about the absolute worst case scenario. I decided that I was going to take every day at a time and I was going to 
um, just work with what I had and really just truly stay present. And I think that when we get a diagnosis, no matter what it is, it's so easy to go five years, 10 years, 15 years into the future and start manifesting this stress within our bodies that physically we don't need the stress in our bodies because stress creates disease, but also stress affects our mental state as well, which is not good for us either. So I decided that I was really going to not like label myself as something, this diagnosis. I was going to just be aware of it, um, but I was not going to like make that my identity. I also decided that I was going to really focus on being present and not worry about the future. I also decided that I was going to remove my urge to dive down rabbit holes and um, surround myself with people that really had just kind of given up on their life based off of a diagnosis. I just became extremely intentional about what I allowed into my own personal like energy space. And all of this is a process. We all go through our own processes for sure. I've had moments where I was like in like dark places. I've had moments when I've been, um, really not affected at all by it. So this is not to say that like whatever your process is, is wrong. I just want to share what I have found and what I have also observed just from being in a community of people that are really struggling mentally based off of a diagnosis. Um, a diagnosis of any sort can definitely change our lives. It definitely can be struggling. It definitely can be... Um, frustrating because you go from being what you think is a normal person to all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, something is wrong with me. My body is weak in some area. I'm imperfect. Who's going to love me? Am I going to be a burden to people that I love? Like all of these questions start to go through your head and I understand it's totally normal. I experienced it too. But I also, you know, after a couple of months after, you know, having the diagnosis that I had received, realized that like, what was this diagnosis actually teaching me? What was this diagnosis actually giving me the opportunity to like, look at my life different? I think that I had been somebody who had been super wrapped up in like achieving things in my life. Like, oh, well, I, I need to achieve this and I need to obtain this and I needed to do all of these things. And I realized after like receiving a diagnosis that it made me become a lot more present and a lot more grounded of an individual, a lot more than I even think that a lot of people ever experience in their lives. Like you meet, um, oftentimes you'll meet like very, um, wise, older people. And you're like, wow, they've just like, they are so wise that they've lived 90 years like my grandfather. But I actually feel like my diagnosis, like helped me fast forward in my wisdom and help me go from being a 30 year old woman who was like really wrapped up in, you know, obtaining all of these exterior things, whether it be like material things, whether it be obtaining the perfect relationship or having the perfect friend group or having whatever. Like I went from being a 30 year old woman who was concerned about that sort of thing, which I think is normal, um, to being a 30 year old woman who realized that like actual being present, actual experiences, um, actual like just loving myself exactly the way that I am flaws and all is like literally what was important. And I got to fast forward to that wisdom, like in a matter of months, this is like some of my understanding, some of my views on life. Like I see people in their sixties that never get to experience how precious our, like just normal things are like our vision, like being able to have our, our body that's functioning correctly, like um, being able to have a roof over our head. I went from somebody who was like very much like in a cycle of like never really finding happiness because I was always chasing outside of myself to finding peace and stillness and happiness within myself, within my body and within a body that to the outside world was deemed as imperfect, flawed, broken. 
And for the first time in my life, after like getting that diagnosis and really kind of chasing after the important things in life, which was being present, being appreciative of the things that I do have, um, I started to find a lot of peace. And honestly, I started to feel a lot of beauty within myself, within my own energy for the first time in my life after like 30 years and receiving a diagnosis, I knew that my, something was wrong with my my vision. I knew something was wrong with my body, that I wasn't perfect. But I also started to understand how like perfect and how like beautiful I am. Like my, my just overall, my energy, my body, like um, I have just this outlook on life that nothing in nature is absolutely perfect, absolutely symmetrical. Like we have like the lightness and the darkness with everything in our lives. And so I started to realize that with the diagnosis that I received, that there was a lot of really beautiful light things that came from this like thing that would be deemed really dark and really unfortunate and really sad. I started to realize that like, although I was having struggles with my vision and my eyes were not perfect, that I still had a working body. I was still able to go outside and go for a walk. And there's so many things that we, um, as human beings, like we can look and compare ourselves to other people and think, oh, well, this person has this and I don't have this, or this person, um, has their vision or this person is able to walk. Like we can have all of these, these ideas about things that other people have that we don't have. But the moment that we start focusing on all of the amazing things that we do have, all of the ways that our bodies are working and that are, Um, holding us down and like making sure that we're getting to the next day. Like if we start having gratitude for that piece of us and also finding the beauty in the diagnosis, finding the beauty in um, maybe something that most people would deem as not very great. I know for me, when I received a diagnosis, yes, I went deep into a dark hole but I didn't sit there for very long. I see a lot of people who get diagnoses and it literally ruins their life. They, um, not only do they hyper obsess about it and overanalyze it for the rest of ever, which usually makes that disease worse. There's studies about this, that as soon as people get diagnoses, usually their symptoms increase because they are constantly stressing themselves out thinking about it. But not only do people go that direction, but then they decide that their whole identity is that specific disease. And that again is like only telling your body, telling your mind something's wrong with you. And so I wanted to make this video because I think that I'm seeing so many people struggle with medical diagnoses. It is definitely just like when you lose someone, getting a medical diagnosis is there's different stages of grief for sure. Um, maybe certain people go through denial. Maybe certain people go through sadness. Maybe people go through anger. All of this stuff is totally normal. I'm here to say that I'm not saying that there's a perfect way to, um, receive a diagnosis or a perfect way to go through those processes. But I do want to say that a lot of people that I see that are going through similar things, regardless what the diagnosis is, a lot of the people that I'm seeing, it just, it's unfortunate because it literally overtakes their life. It becomes their identity. It becomes their excuse um, and their reasoning for everything. Me as somebody who, when I found out that I was potentially losing my vision, instead of sitting at home and wallowing about how awful my life is and how awful the cards were that were laid out for me. Yes, I did that for a couple of months, but instead of doing that for the rest of my life, I took it as an opportunity to really evaluate, like, what is this showing me? What is this, what opportunities am I being given from this situation? And I decided to take my diagnosis and make it the best thing that has ever happened to me. I finally allowed myself to be pushed out of my comfort zone and realize that all of the things that I had ever wanted to do in my life, um, like travel abroad solo, like, um, quitting my career that I had hated, like all of these things that I had been wanting to do. I gave myself the green pass to just go ahead and do it. Cause in my mind I was thinking, well, if my condition gets worse, then I may not be able to do these things. So I might as well go ahead and get them done right now. And the thing is, is 
everybody should be living like that. There's all these cliche terms like live life like there's no tomorrow or love the people that you um, – that you love as if they're not going to be here. And I genuinely try to live my life in this way because my like thing that my diagnosis, the thing that I was given to really teach me something about life has to do with my vision. I'm able to really take in moments. Like if I'm watching a sunset, I can really think like, dang, I may not ever see a sunset again. Or if I'm looking at Um, a loved one, I can think, wow, I may not ever get to see what they look like again. Let me take this moment in. And I think that people that receive diagnoses, we don't realize a lot of us how blessed we are because we're actually obtaining that wisdom of that 90 year old person, um, like early on in life and in a period often where we can actually still have moments to enjoy this wisdom that we received. As far as like loving the people that we love, taking in moments, being present, all of these things are things that you should be doing regardless if you have a diagnosis or not. You should be, all of us should be living our lives as if we aren't going to live tomorrow. We should be living our lives and taking in visual moments of like, wow, let me savor this like experience because I may not get this experience ever again. Um, or even like if we're unhappy, if we're not in a relationship, if we're not living in a place, if we are not um, in a great career for us, like if we're in any type of situations that don't feel good, all of us have the reason to just make different choices and live the life that we want to live right now. You don't have to wait for a diagnosis for that to happen. But if you do get a diagnosis, why wouldn't you choose to move that direction instead of moving the direction of your life is over, you're broken, I'm angry, why is everybody else like like healthier than me? Like why would we move in that direction which is so dark and so negative rather than move in the direction of light and beauty and being like curious about what is this all teaching me? What can I do to be a more light in the world? Because oftentimes like people not oftentimes, let's be honest, none of us are perfect. All of us may have been given cards, whether it be a medical diagnosis, whether it be a specific trauma, whether it be a um, certain thing in your life, like all of us um, have obstacles that we face, regardless what it looks like. It could be a diagnosis or it could be an emotional like trauma that we have to overcome. Like all of us are given different experiences in our lives. And I'm a true believer that whatever experience that we're given, whatever cards that we are given, they're very specific to our lives plan. And I'm a true believer that if you can only become curious about what your specific thing is that you've been given and really become curious about what can you do with that? Who can you impact? Um, how can you show up differently in your life? Like if you can become curious about what it is that you're being taught through this experience, instead of just hyper focusing on all of the things that you are not going to get or how your life is going to be so bad because of this, I genuinely think that it is so very much more easy, so very much more easy. It's so much easier to go from being in depression, going to be in anxiety, um, and helping you get out of that grief stage when it comes to diagnoses. Understanding that literally just because you were given like a file that has all this information about a stamp that they put on you as your identity as a diagnosis doesn't mean that um, maybe somebody on the other side of the world who like is not in a state of opportunity that maybe you're in right now, like who's to say that like one of those is worse like one of those situations is worse. Like we all, the point of this is we all have different things that we struggle with. They all, all of our lives look different, no matter where you're living in the world, no matter what your health condition is, no matter who your family is, no matter, no matter what your financial status is, literally all of us experience some sort of different challenge. And all of our challenges are literally designed to help us grow and help us evolve. And so with medical diagnoses, I think that it's really easy to just hyper-focus on like 
research and how horrible this is and how messed up your life is and why was this card given to me? But we have to understand that all of us are given different cards, no matter if it comes in the form of a diagnosis or if it comes in the form of where you grew up or what financial status you were born into. Like all of us have different things that we experience and that we have an opportunity to grow through. So I wanted to make this video because I hope that this is somewhat inspiring to you. I hope that this is giving you some sort of a different perspective when it comes to your diagnosis that you've received because I'm a firm believer the way that I look at my personal experience is I my identity is not wrapped up in some file that a doctor has in their doctor's, doctor's office for me. I understand that I do have um, challenges that may be different than other people, but I also understand that all of those other people have different challenges than what I experience. So my identity is not wrapped up in a diagnosis. I am patient with myself. I am allowing myself to feel the different emotions that I feel when it comes to the struggles that I have on a daily basis because of this diagnosis. But I also understand, again, I'm going to have different struggles and different obstacles, regardless if it has to do with my diagnosis or not. That's just a part of life. And so the way that I really have been looking at my specific situation is being curious about what this is teaching me. Um, I've allowed it to teach me so many things about life, about being more present, about being more grateful. I have... Um, I've just really had a totally different shift and I just wanted to make this video because I think that a lot of people are struggling mentally when it comes to medical diagnoses and there is no doubt about why. I get why. I just also wanted to offer the different perspective that this could actually be the best thing that ever happened to you. If you can start to become, um, if you can start to just have acceptance for the cards that you were given and become curious about what those cards are here to teach you and really just learn to be more present in your everyday like body, I genuinely believe that you're going to have a shift of mindset when it comes to your diagnosis or when it comes to the cards that you've been given. I talk a lot about on my channel about how I have dealt with depression and anxiety, how I've learned to become more present, how I've learned to tap into myself a lot more and how I've been able to become a lot more curious and reflective about just who I am as a person and life in general. So if you, if this video resonates with you, if you are interested in having a positive outlook about the cards that you've been given in your life, regardless if it comes in the form of a diagnosis or if it comes in the form of a specific trauma that you may have experienced. Like if you're interested in like evolving and being more present and um, learning the like lessons that you are here to learn in this life and by doing that, like becoming more like tapped into yourself. If this is like interesting to you, please subscribe to my channel. Please share this video with somebody who you think may be struggling. This is my own personal experience. This is my own um, understanding of where I'm at today. Where I have been at has shifted and changed. I have been in dark places before. I sometimes go into dark places, but for the most part, my understanding about who I am as a person, the cards that were given to me, the diagnosis that was given to me, I, for the most part, stay on an even playing field that this is not my identity. This is just an opportunity for me to evolve. And um, I'm not imperfect. I'm literally perfect exactly the way that I was supposed to come into this world. This is, this is who I was supposed to be. So if this video resonated with you, please share it with somebody. Please comment below and please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be sharing a lot more um, about how I've just been, you know, dealing with my own personal journey. I know that my personal journey can definitely resonate with somebody out there, especially if you are um, also struggling with something that may be a diagnosis of some sort. So Thank you all for listening and I'll see you on the next video.